How many magicians does it take to do magic? Just one will do the trick. <laughs> Today's episode is all about sorcery in the new paranormal. My guest today is a magician, no, a wizard, whose superstardom began on America's Got Talent. His sorcery evolved, and he eventually obtained the honor of this claim to fame. He made Adele disappear. Ooh! Please welcome Rob Lake. Rob! Let's begin with a lightning round! Favorite movies? Hugo, the Martin Scorsese kind of love letter magic and the movies. Uh, the original animated Beauty and the Beast by Disney, and I also really love E.T. What was your major in college? I had two years at college before I up and left to do magic full time, and I was there studying health and exercise science. Favorite Halloween costume? I have the coolest mom, and she made me the best costumes growing up. Probably the best one I ever had. I was the Scarecrow one year and had the coolest homemade mom costume that was legendary. Where did you go on vacation last? So I've not had a vacation or a day off in over a year. Over a year? Um, and honestly, I haven't had a real vacation since before the pandemic. I did, you know, squeeze some time away to see, uh, you know, uh, for an afternoon to Broadway show when I was in, working in New York. Uh, and I did escape for half a day at Disneyland in the last few months. But that's kind of the most vacation I've had lately. Well, as long as you have time for a bath so you can clean up your act. <laughs> what is one thing you regret spending money on? Growing up in magic, I would read magic magazines and catalogs and read descriptions or tricks and save up my allowance or show some new birthday parties. I would buy a lot of rubbish again and again. And I always wish I wouldn't buy these things. I kind of got deceived by these descriptions. It was before the internet, so you couldn't really see a video of these tricks. Um, and I also, when I was kind of turning pro, I spent a lot of money buying professional props from a professional magic builder in Las Vegas. And I saved all my money and then some. And I got a disaster piles of junk that just didn't work. So I had, but, but even that, I don't regret that because I was able to learn how to have my own illusions designed and built for my specifications. So even from these bad, miserable, and devastating process at the time, I was able to turn them into a learning experience for me. Very inspiring words, Rob. By the way, did you hear about the magician who did magic with chocolate? He had loads of Twix up his sleeve. Now, you made Adele disappear. How in the world did that come about? So about a year ago, um, I got a call from uh, the people who were working on Adele's Las Vegas show, the new version after they canceled. And they had some ideas they were trying to, to work on for the show and they needed an illusionist to come on board. So I met with them. I clicked really well with the team. Uh, I got to meet with her. She is a dream. And I was just part of the show. It was uh, about eight or nine months I was working on the show, but I couldn't tell anyone what I was working on. I had to fly to meetings in London and uh, LA and Vegas all the time, but I couldn't tell a soul what I was working on. It was a really cool project. And then when the show opened, I was able to tell the world. And, and it's an amazing illusion that I worked on and it goes viral every single weekend. Hmm. Is Adele good at magic? Uh, obviously she disappears every show she's doing. So I think she's gotta be great at magic and it astounds the fans every single weekend. Fair, fair. Last week, I saw a magician walk down the street. He turned into a supermarket. No! You must have a great team on your side. Yeah, I, I have an amazing team. Some of them have been with me for, for uh, years. Some of my dancers have been with me for, I think, eight or nine years now. And some of my crew have been with me for a decade or more. During the pandemic, you know, when the whole world stopped, we did lose quite a few people. You know, uh, it was just a time for them to transition on to other jobs or other fields because the entertainment industry just shut down. So I've got I have some really great new people too, but I have a really strong core team that really helps make the magic happen. And, and I always say, kind of joking, but not really, that they do all the work and I get to take the credit. Ah, yes. A good magician's assistant is hard to find. They're highly sawed after. <laughs> <laughs> have you incorporated any spooky elements in your shows. Absolutely. So around the turn of the century, when it was kind of known as the golden era of magic, where we have Houdini, we have Keller, we have uh, Thurston and Carter the Great and Alexander and, you know, the Harry Blackstone, 
a highlight of all of these magic shows was a spirit segment of the show. Do ghosts come back? Can we communicate with dead? Because culturally around that time was a massive ghost and spiritual movement. People were claiming to communicate with the deads. People were wondering what would happen in the afterlife. There's this whole phenomenon culture wide in most Western cultures about communicating with the dead. So every magician was kind of expected to do a demonstration using illusion to appear to commune with the deceased. So most magic shows of that era would close their show with a seance demonstration, and they would draw people in by saying, come and you'll see a live ghost live on stage. And a lot of the techniques that are used in special effects, like in the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland, um, I'm sure as a ghost you're familiar with that, uh, they came from techniques developed by magicians around this time who were working to create illusions of putting spirits and ghosts on stages. What do you call a magic owl? Houdini! <laughs> come on, come on, there are hundreds of jokes thrown around on this show. They're not all gonna be winners. So I'm a fan of magic history. I've got in my office here, I've got, you know, uh, magic posters and I love magic history. So I'm actually debuting, hopefully this year, a, uh, a throwback to what a seance routine would have looked like around the vaudeville era of the show, um, which is pretty exciting, cool. We're doing it a little bit differently. We're doing it in a very theatrical way, trying to claim there's a ghost or a spirit on stage because obviously the real ghosts have to be respected and like lonesome here. But, uh, you know, it, it's a demonstration of what that segment in a show would have looked like in the vaudeville era. So I'm really excited to have that ghosty and spiritual kind of haunted part of the show coming into play very soon. That sounds fascinating! You're such a wealth of knowledge, Rob, and you must have done a ton of research. So, so I love history. I love to learn. I love to read. I love to improve my show. I, and, some, and, I, and I'm not in any rush. There's no hard deadline for me. I, I want to put it in my show right now, but I, I want to take the time to do it right. One of my illusions took me over 11 years to get into the show, and it was 11 years of, tr of active trial and error, not stuff. And then another illusion I had the idea when I was 12, and it took until uh, I was over 35 years old to finally make it into the show. So I'm not in any rush. I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned about doing it completely right and getting, getting it perfect, which means spending the time to do the research, the historical accuracies, the details, the script writing, the staging. And if it's not right, it's not going to be in just yet. What do you call a magician who has lost their magic? Ian! Behold. Rob, I'm sure you've heard plenty of magic jokes over the years. Oh, I hear all the magic jokes. You know, usually people want me to make their husband or their wife disappear, you know, or or they want to show me a card trick, which that that, that itself is probably one of the one of the greatest jokes they can do. <laughs> I've got a good ghost joke. Okay. Why why were the ghosts in the bar? They were there for the booze. Ha! I'm dying. <laughs> Thank you, Rob, for shooting the sheet with me today. My friends, I must ghost you for now. Until next time, goodbye. What? It didn't work? Well, you can't blame me. I'm no Adele. <clears throat> Let's end this show the traditional way. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>